Okay, good evening. We will call to order <clears throat> the January 10th meeting of the Birmingham Parks and Recreation Board. So before we proceed, Kyle, can you step up and oh. I will go get yes. your plate after I do the roll call. How's that? This okay over here? Yeah, that, um, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, Heather Carmona. Here. Susan Collins. Here. Sam Graham. Here. Ross Kaplan. Here. Kyle Goody. Here. John Rucci. Here. Ann Lip. Here. Student reps Zachary Makita. Here. And Matthew Winter. Here. Okay. Um, first item on our agenda, we will um, we have some new faces around our table. Introductions. Um, we would like to welcome Scott. It's Zielinski, right? The yep. new uh, director of public services. We also have joining us Leah Blitzinski. Blazinski, Blazinski, uh, city planner. So great to have you both here. Do you want to mention anything, Scott? Uh, your background or uh, yes, what so you're most looking forward to when working with this great board here? <laughs> so as I've uh, actually already told Carrie, in the short term, I only plan to attend just to learn more about the board. Okay. Um, I've been with the city for three years, but I've been with the engineering department, working my way up through that department. Uh, so I don't know a ton about what this, this board does directly. Uh, so I'm going to be relying on her to keep being the main liaison for our department to the board. Um, with the engineering department, I came in as a construction engineer and I was literally boots on the ground for the Maple Road project and a lot of other work that got done around town uh, during construction. And then I got promoted to the assistant city engineer where I started doing more of the planning side of things for projects. And uh, I was more of the 30,000 foot oversight for projects such as the South Old Woodward job. So I've been spending a lot of time getting to know more and more about the city, how everything else, uh, work, how all the groups work together, the different departments. That's half the reason I'm encouraging that Melissa keeps coming to represent the manager's office and the rest of City Hall. And with <coughs> Leah being with the planning group, which she'll be able to tell you a little bit more about what she's doing, having her start coming to our meetings as well. That way we have a little more insight from other departments within the city. Uh, so I guess my most ex exciting part of this is how we're going to get more interaction from other parts of the city uh, as far as what staff goes um, so that we can, you know, make this board uh, a little more, I don't know, even help it grow as a board, I guess, is what I'm going for. So Great. Yeah, great. so I look forward to seeing a lot more meetings. Good, great. Thank, thank you forward to having you participate when you can great and um, I know we will ha we have somebody we have the planning director joining us but we will we'll, we'll wait we'll move on to uh, the approval of the minutes of the December 6th meeting I don't think your mic is on Heather I don't oh, know it is but I need to can you hear it no I can't okay thank you Heather thanks thanks Cindy okay we'll move into the approval of the December 6th uh, meeting minutes Any comments, questions, edits, changes? No? I'll move that we approve the minutes from the December 6th meeting. Okay. Moved by Ann. And second. Second by Ross. <coughs> Thank you. Roll call Heather Carmona? Yes. Susan Collins? Yes. Ian Graham? Yes. Ross Kaplan? Yes. Kyle Gouli? Yes. John Rushi? Yes. Ann Lip? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the next item is open to the public for items that are not on the agenda. If anyone would like to speak, you have two minutes to uh, present to the board. And we're in the room here, no? Anyone uh, joining us via Zoom? Okay. All right, we'll move into our agenda items. <clears throat> we have one agenda item, and that is the nomination of the 2023 Parks and Recreation Board Chairperson and Vice Chairperson. Um, I will turn it over to Carrie and to define how this typically works. Um, 
or Connie? It's by nomination, correct? It correct. is. Okay. So, um, so I put in four. I put it in front of all of you how the nomination should occur. There's no second needed. So okay. So basically, we'll nominate. The person accepts. Then we go on to the vice chair. Okay. Okay. And we vocalize it while it's in front of us. We still have to make that. Correct. Okay. You take all nominations at once. Yep. As a tally. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. We will open up the nomination process to members of the board for chairperson. I nominate Heather. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, John. <laughs> Ross, are you? Oh, we don't need a second. Need okay, a second. got it, got it. Okay. Any other nominations? You, you accept the nomination? There's no other nomination? Nope. All right. I accept, I accept the nomination to continue as chairperson. Perfect. Okay, it's, um, let's do a roll call on that first, then we'll go to the vice. So, okay. Heather Carmona. Do Sus I vote? Y y yes. Susan Collins. Yes. Pam Graham. Yes. Ross Kaplan. Yes. Ann Lip. Yes. Kyle Gooby. Yes. John Rushi. Yes. Open passes. Did I get everybody? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, the next is nomination for vice chairperson. Do we have any nominations? Susan. I'd like to nominate Pam Graham for vice chairperson. Thank you. It's a nomination. Okay. We will then vote to approve Pam as vice chairperson. Yep. Connie? No more. No more other nominations for vice chair. Okay. We can do the vote. <laughs> Pam accepted it. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. Heather Carmona. Yes. Susan Collins. Yes. Pam Graham. Yes. Ross Kaplan. Yes. John Rushi. Yes. Kyle Gooley. Yes. Thank you. Oh, and look, sorry. Yes. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. I went right by you, Hunbun. Thanks. All right. All good. All right. Well, thank you. Glad to be with the team again. Thank you, everyone. Um, all right. Next item are communications items. We don't have any other, <clears throat> looks like, action items this evening. The, the next item is the for review. Uh, information it appears for the Michigan Sparks grant application that we discussed um, a bit at our last meeting for the trail improvements. Any, I guess you're looking for just comments? Yeah, you know, um, we wanted to include this in your agenda packet this evening um, for your, your review. It was completed and submitted timely. Um, just a quick refresher about the MI Sparks grant program. Um, we did apply for the first round. There will be three rounds uh, in total, but we wanted to make sure to get our application submitted for round one. We did ask for the big ask, the million dollars. Um, the minimum was 100000 and um, we, we decided to go ahead and apply for the one million, um, knowing that there's a couple more opportunities uh, to apply should you know if we get it that'd be wonderful but also you know we'll get scoring back and we'll see where potentially we could make some adjustments to the application if warranted and then um, we have two more opportunities to apply um, the first round will be announced they're estimating the the January 30th um, and then round two will open up shortly after that with uh, awards in spring of 2023. And then round three, again, same thing with awards in summer of 2023. Um, there's 15 available, uh, 15 million available right now as part of this round. At least that's the estimate. They're still, you know, reviewing all applications. There was a lot of interest. Um, from other municipalities, of course, and it wasn't only open to municipalities, it was also open to recreational facilities, though. Um, so that being said, we, you know, we're excited for the opportunity, and, um, and we wanted to share the application with you. I especially would like to point out the letters of support that were included as part of the application. Um, and then if you, if you happen to miss it, 1A one and 1B in the application, uh, the full, the full um, 
response to that question is at the end of this application. We, we couldn't uh, fit it all, so we put it as an attachment. Uh, we did have the consultant prepare this with us, guided by the city, though. So we uh, took a very active role in some of the questions in particular that a consultant wouldn't really know about our unique city, you know. So, um, so yeah, it was a joint effort, um, and we wanted to share it with you this evening. I consultant, you mean the landscape architect that worked on that prepared the, on the concept the concept plan? Yes. Okay. Have any other comments? Susan, I, um, I thought it was really well written. Did you write all of it? Um, no, I had assistance. We oh. had uh, other eyes on it, so it was uh, our manager's office, okay. myself, um, and Leslie from the museum. Oh, great. We worked um, together. So I had a question because I'm not familiar with this Ross Family Foundation. It looks like did he, did they donate money to the city in 2010, or that was kind of yes. Okay. And we've not we've not had a project move forward to utilize the donation yet. So oh, it, it's still available. Great. Okay, thank you. Ross? Um, is it sort of all or nothing for the million, or they yes, come back and say, oh, here's 100000 or 500000 It's not all or nothing. Oh, so it's anything It could be a lesser term. amount. Mm -hmm. Great. John? Um, I'm looking at the, the financial <coughs> detail page. Mm -hmm. It looks like 2101 the total cost for the, for the project. Mm -hmm. I guess that includes more than our bond money. It includes the money that the museum has available and, and so on. If you consider all of those, you, you get the $2 million because we're nowhere near $2 million on our bond money, right? Well, um, when you mean by our bond money. Well, um, but the project cost. Would be yeah. Yeah. exceeding that. Or, or, I forgot what it was, but it was double what we originally thought from the bond, wasn't it? I think the original yes. project cost. Yes, we yeah. we anticipated back in 2019 for trail 300,000 mm -hmm. uh, in the first round, but we also designated for the second uh, bond issue another 450,000. So really, so. trail improvements we designated or, or we're hoping. To accomplish with 750,000 Booth Park um, corner feature, that we allocated at the time 300,000. Right. So, um, and as we all know, we've kind of incorporated the corner feature as part of this project. Mm -hmm. um, just made sense too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as the trail entry. Right. And so the, again, that's not two million. So the two million is comprised of our money plus museum money, I guess. Yep, right? some museum money. Yeah, okay. Some other engineering money, perhaps, like sidewalk for multimodal or other sources of funding right. within the yeah. city budget, is that correct? Okay. Great. Uh, Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you might have said this, Carrie, I'm sorry. If, mm -hmm. um, if, if we're not selected in the first round, was feedback given, do you know, why? If, um, and then is it just a matter of kind of re-putting it in or re-modifying based on feedback, do you think? We'll have our scores. Okay. Um, so those they'll share with us. And then I would imagine that we could reach out and, and see to one of the coordinators to, to figure out how, you know, yeah, well, how we can do better. Right. Okay. So we'll know within a month. Or less than, really. Yeah. Right? Okay. Really good. Exciting. Okay. Any other comments from um, members? <coughs> Any other comments? Yeah, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Pam. Um, I don't know if you. We're not. We're not taking action. Any action today to recommend to the city commission to move the consultant architect to make final final drawings. Do you have any? Is, is are we kind of waiting till this? Um, so the, out, the or was there feedback from our previous meetings that was given to that consultant and they want some time to think yes. about it or what's the what's the timeline there? So we're we're currently reviewing with other appropriate boards the concept plan. So okay. we have yet to meet with the Martha Baldwin Park Board, but they oversee a portion of this concept drawing. So we're gathering all the information now. 
So the and feedback then, from this meeting, from the Engage Birmingham, is an internal review within the city departments right now. Correct. And then we'll um, engage the consultants to make the appropriate changes. Okay. And that would be an additional fee. Okay. It's not as part of the eleven thousand for the cons you know that we approved right. last year to get this meeting. But you might not come back to us asking for. for it depends on how it much. Depends it depends on the amount, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. Uh, the next item for verbal update discussion is the Play is Essential grant application. I'm trying to remember when uh, that went in. Did that go in the end of December, December 30th? Too? Yep. We also met that deadline right. timely. Uh, it's a lesser amount, but definitely worthwhile. Um, for you know, uh, improving uh, accessibility for all, right? Inclusivity and um, so that grant we applied for a two thousand dollar grant. The max for that was five thousand, but we wanted to um, kind of uh, give a better application by providing a little bit more of a match, um, and so. Um, Adams Park, it would be to add seat backs to the seesaw, which would be very helpful. And we received feedback from, remember Susan, uh, oh no, um, Sarah. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry, um, that came and gave us uh, her story and her, of her son. So, um, and then also a stationary um, cycler, it's called. It would be something that's easily added to the larger structure at Adams Park. There's room. We've, we spoke with the architect and thought that might be uh, something that would could be added at a later date. And so we applied for to cover both of that, both of those items. OK. All right. Very good. Any other comments on that? All right, we, next item is a long range planning session on Saturday, January 21st. It's the annual strategic planning session that the city yep. has every year. Every year, yep. starts at 8.30. We're up, our DPS is up around nine, right? Uh, tentative, of course. Um, and our topics include a parks and recreation bond update, including trail improvements. Ice Arena, um, a year in review, um, golf update, and uh, we're looking into some EV. What do we want to call EV update? Yeah, it's a general electric vehicle update. <coughs> okay. What we're looking into for green improvements for the DPS as a whole. So. Right. And we'll send out a schedule once, you know, a more exact schedule to all like we've done in the past. Okay, and in the past, I know I've attended that, and I don't know, you know, what type of feedback or participation you you suggest or require from um, from the board. I mean, it's, it's recommended if people want to attend. You're more than welcome. We're okay. glad to have you. But and this is separate from the long range, the 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 master plan mm -hmm. process, right? Yeah. And then yes. yeah, okay. Just to be clear, because I know there's a lot of planning going on in the city right now, so this is. Long, broad, long-term for the departments to collaborate and talk about goal setting for uh, for long-range planning. And it's also a great way to um, learn what is coming up in the coming year. It's a great um, start to our calendar year, and you kind of get an idea of where each department is heading. So we'll touch on quite a few topics. I think last year we touched on about 30 different staff reports in um, about six hours. So. Okay. Um, all right. Very good. We will try to be present at that. Um, I feel like we're just moving on. We should have something <laughs> really to dig our teeth in here, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, we're at next item is an article or uh, email. We have article and an email that was received, I believe, right? There was mm -hmm. an email of an article. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
uh, on pickleball. Those seem to keep coming in fast and hard all the time. Um, this was, I believe this was, was this the New York Times? This is the one that we referenced at the last meeting, but it wasn't in our packet. Right, because it didn't make the packet. It didn't make the packet, right. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm um, presenting it to you tonight. Mm -hmm. Just for communication. Right. And then the email was from uh, John. John. Yep, so I included that. Okay, swing. I, I didn't realize how large that swing is. Was that swing something that was considered potentially for the grant, or is that something that would have been, seems like it would have been more than possibly $2,000? But, or is that just? It was not. It was not. No. Okay. Well. The, uh, you know, rereading the pickleball article, I wonder, is there a chance of revisiting the Eaton location now that we have a member of the engineering staff <laughs> as, a, as a parks advocate? Because <laughs> I think, my understanding is that's what killed, we wanted to put pickleball in at the corner of Eaton and and I guess the engineering department said they have maybe sometime in the future some sort of plan for that property, but it sounded pretty vague to me. So I don't well, know. I, I think I it, was, it was water related. Wasn't there it? were water numerous mm -hmm. reasons that we decided to move yeah. forward with Crestview. Um, other planned projects, I think, is what you're referring to. Uh, we have the South Eaton um, road work that we knew was up and coming in the near future. And, um, but we remember we, our bond funding is not available to accomplish brand new right. courts and all the necessary amenities that come with it. So Crestview Park, <coughs> that project has been already approved by the city commission to do a, a conversion of those courts. So we're moving forward with that. I don't think that that location is out of the you know mix if we want to add more tennis courts in the future, but that's something that will have to be prioritized with other projects, sure. right? Yeah, the only comments I can provide from engineering is I know they were, it had some vague conflict with some of the improvements from South Eaton that are intended uh, the water stuff you're talking about was a additional thing we were saying if we're considering putting in new infrastructure there was how could we do water retention in addition to the new courts because it's a good time to try to build into the infrastructure when you have a brand new project especially in parks areas uh, green infrastructure mm -hmm. so like if we're splitting off an area to hold some storm water and that sort of thing and that's stuff that the planning group has also been involved with as well. The planning director um, was able to arrive. I don't know when we intend to mix him in. Whenever. Uh, whenever. <laughs> no problem. But yeah, so I know those vague parts. I wasn't directly involved with the review of what came through for the proposal of that. It's just those are the cliff notes that I recall from when it came through. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I, it won't be I'm the last. Surprised we won't be the last we're talking about. Well, we it. heard from the residents in October, I think it was, and I halfway thought we'd hear from them again. But we haven't. So, I don't know. This, yeah, well, come back I to mean, the board. The dialogue's open. I'm sure you get emails or whatever, and issues about concerns and media are reviewed by city staff, reviewed by legal, and there's no reason for us to stop our plan that pickleball uh, tennis court expansion in Crestview Park it, it is approved and the con contractor is defined and we'll start working in the spring. spring. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know, I think sometimes as a board we, I, I am comfortable that, that we made that mm -hmm. decision mm -hmm. and no decision is perfectly easy or, mm -hmm. or obvious, but. I did recently receive an email from the um, gentleman that presented at the October meeting. So there has been a little bit of, but not to come in front of the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to just add one item before we introduce Nick and get into unfinished business here. Um, since it's relevant, in the last meeting, there was communication 
I forwarded it. I don't think it was included in the pack. I just, I think it's important to note, um, this was sent to a city commissioner, it was sent to Therese actually, um, a couple months ago from a gentleman who, a resident who um, has a, a blog and apparently he's an avid golfer. Uh, his blog is called Ingrained Kindness and he blogs about all sorts of different topics and um, he took the time to blog about his interaction with Jackie Brito at the um, at Lincoln Hills and Springdale and it's it's lovely so I just wanted to go on record and note that we all know that we have a gem in Jackie <laughs> and that um, obviously people outside of us and take the time to acknowledge her so mm -hmm. I want to thank her and thank the gentleman's name is Roger Steed so thank you Roger if you were interested in his blog it's called third act I'm trying to see. yeah third act. so okay um, all right, before we get into unfinished business, we've had the planning director join us, Nick Dupuis, is that correct? Dupuis. Dupuis, thank you. But thank you for uh, making it, spicing yeah. it up a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes people add an R in there or uh, the wrong S. So. Well, I, I feel like, you know, we've got a lot of the knowledgeable of the city sitting here right now, so <laughs> you're dedicating a lot of time to our meeting tonight, thank you. Um, so. Nick, yeah. anything you would like to share? Um, I know Scott mentioned we're going to hopefully have continued engagement a little more with the departments here, with you and Leah, as we move forward, particularly probably in our master plan. So we look forward to you know, collaborating and communicating more with you. Absolutely. So uh, Nick Dupuy, Planning Director, I've been here for five years. Uh, so you may have seen my face, uh, most of you, somewhere along the lines. Hey, Nick, could you um, talk into the microphone? Of course. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hi. So um, what we're really here for is uh, parks and open space is a big part of urban planning, uh, not only in the city of Birmingham, but in the, in the profession. We've had parks and open space as major parts of all of our comprehensive master plans, starting all the way from the beginning in 1927. So not only have we, um, do we want to kind of connect the dots here where they historically haven't really been connected by starting to come to you all, engaging with you all a little bit more, um, for that historical reason, but also because of the 2040 plan, there's a lot of park stuff going on in that as well. Also, we've also had an opportunity in hiring Leah, who has some good park experience where uh, an ordinary planner may not. So the stars kind of aligned here. Um, we've been talking about this for about a year, so we thought it was a good time to get started. So our intention is to come add to the conversation. Uh, we don't intend to complicate things or be obstructionists in any way, just looking to add some new ideas, some, some fresh ideas to the, to the foray. And, then I'll, and Leah will be the, the main person you'll see. We plan to come to every meeting, for the whole meeting, so this is no problem. And I'd like to pass it to her. Sure, hi. Uh, so Leah Blazinski, city planner with the city of Birmingham. I think um, I'll just add a little bit about my background. I've only been with the city for um, just over a year. It's been a great year of learning um, how the city works, and it's a wonderful city. Um, my background relevant um, to the work of this board, um, prior to um, coming here, um, I was working in parks and recreation planning um, with the Huron-Clinton Metro Parks, and I was lucky enough to be doing that prior to the pandemic and then throughout the pandemic um, when life changed immensely. Um, until I uh, came here. So I'm really excited about just providing another touch point uh, between city staff and other departments with this board um, and uh, definitely working on sustainability in the city of Birmingham. That's great. I think your background here at the watersheds would be is really important too, so thank you. Glad yes, it was the Metro Parks. Met, met, oh, the Metro watershed. Parks. But yes, <coughs> yes. Got it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Is it too premature, I guess, since we have all you here in the room? We've, we've talked a little bit about um, knowing that we're about to embark on the uh, master planning process for our parks plan. I think there's, and I would speak for myself sometimes, some overlap or confusion as to you know the 2040 information. We received some information at a last meeting from a past consultant sharing some ideas. Is it, can you outline in simple terms, or maybe it's something that we can have documented in a meeting, of what we anticipate the next steps being for this board 
and how we begin to look at the feedback that has been provided as the 2040, you know, public engagement, you know, what's been provided as the last master plan and how all of that starts coming together. Mm -hmm. um, so we can start, I think, maybe sh formulating and shaping some ideas as a board or as individuals before we're presented with just information in front of us at a meeting. So is that? So I think the first step, so the plan is, so it's not an, uh, officially adopted yet. So we're going to have to start there. After it's officially adopted, we're hoping to translate the recommendations that are throughout the plan into a, a more simple, what we'll call action table. And once we have that action table, we'll be able to extract anything related to parks and rec. Okay. And I think that's the best place to start. Okay. And it's not an all at once type of thing. We're not going to say, hey, we've got these 10 projects we'd like to start with you now. Uh, they might come up as you do your ordinary business or when the time is right, we might come to you and say, hey, we'd like to maybe start talking about this. So I guess my answer would be it's going to, I think it's going to be a little bit organic. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a 20 year time horizon. So we've got mm -hmm. uh, that 20 years goes pretty <coughs> it's fast. It's not a separate document though. Sometimes Heather carries around with her all the time. No, the, a, a park plan, a long range planning. That's, yeah, that's our document. That's our five that's year. That's the park's park. five year master plan. Is it, is it yeah. uh, the intention to make a renewed, to, to renew that process or to integrate it more with the city yes, plan? Yes, we need to, that'll be a separate document. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's what I'm referring to is how, you know, how, because the 2040 plan will be adopted before we embark on this process, but I think that it's going to be pretty c soon after we're going to start, correct? In the next couple months? It's I'm great just trying timing. to get like yes. a little timeline, yes. the, yeah, the in, horizon. In the next Sp before spring, spring. yeah, Probably March yeah. meeting or okay. Yeah, right. I think that's great timing. I yeah, think that's yeah, it, almost perfect timing. Yep. It really is. So the consultants you hire, you'll require them to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. They'll integrate it. And I th I'd say it'd be pretty seamless. Yeah. Okay. The the 2040 plan has some recommendations for parks, including land acquisition, like small bits of land acquisition. Do you? You're in a present or you indicated in the long range planning meeting you'd be talking about bonds it's way too early to think about changing course or any if any park bond would go, go towards acquiring park property that's a tough one because we had a priorities that were recommended and um, through, you know working with the bond issue um, company we had outlined projects, right, that we wanted to accomplish as part of this. So I'm not sure how flexible we can be as far as acquisition. Um, do you know, Scott or Melissa? So what your, your underlying question that you're asking is, would we have course change based on what we currently have bonds for, based on the new master plan and the new long range plan that we would have. Yes, that's an accurate. There is a grandfathering that kind of happens in these types of processes because as she was indicating, there's usually uh, control measures on what you can spend your bond money on. So we can't really change that course of direction because there's a change in our master plan unless it falls within an accepted allocation that we can do it for. So it'll be, like you saying, it'll start with 2040, it'll be laid out. We'll be revising our long range plan based off of the 2040. And then we will see what we can change if it makes sense to change any mm -hmm. of the stuff that we've been bonded for based okay. off of that. I, I just like to make a follow up comment and it's somewhat related to a, a comment that was made about, um, that Carrie made about pickleball funding or whatever. The bond is not the only source of money that the city has to improve parks. And I don't think we should shut down any like citizen issue of we should have pickleballs or we should have pickleballs across the street or what is the appropriate way to go. We wrote the last, you know, long range plan without a bond. We have a bond. That's not our only money. Mm -hmm. As we talk about strategic um, things, the city has other sources of money and does not have to sell bonds in order to improve our parks. And I hope that that kind of continues to be part of our operation here. And that certainly, like, John, you're a great, like, steward of, like, what, what's happening to the bond money. But that's not the only um, money that our citizens deserve for upkeep and improvement of park space. 
My, my guess is, as Nick was saying, that a lot of the recommendations that will come from the action table or the executive su summary are, are going to be, the majority are not going to be bond projects because we're talking beyond mm -hmm. the next year, two years. So the bulk of those would probably yeah, not be bond. I, I was yeah. like awkwardly asking questions just to kind of see if there was some, mm. so, some go on. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally satisfied yeah. and I'm really happy to see so much engagement by other departments and cooperation and, and all that. So thank you. And it's who knows right. what will happen in the 20 plus years. We do have other mechanisms that aren't even money related that we have that we can secure stuff like that. Is yeah. it possible? site specific it's hard right. to say mm -hmm. but there's also been park projects that were in the last master plan that weren't completed yes. that were mm -hmm. carried over to mm -hmm. this master plan mm -hmm. so we're trying still spinning the tires on that a little bit waiting for an opportunity so right. hopefully they come but they may they may not okay great good. thank you well, we will be great for this board to be part of that process because I don't think we've coalesced as a planning. I know Ross is he's like the grandfather of he's been involved in all the master plans, but I think many of us, I think all of us have not outside of Ross, so it would be nice to have that engagement as a team to, to work on that together. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions on, um, I don't even know what, what item we're on. I think we're just talking about. Um, unfinished business. Any items of unfinished business? business and I just want to say um, the figure skating club had their holiday show December 11th uh, not to be self congratulatory but I think it went well <laughs> uh, Katie Collins skated great in particular the beautiful senior solo and led my finale for me um, so just wanted to say that. thank you I was gonna ask that okay. I saw that in the notes. excellent um, Yes, go uh, ahead. So, I know myself and a few others are just newer to the process. Yeah. If, if you could speak into the mic sure. so that the Thanks, recording Steve. can get you. Yep. Yeah. How, uh, so, how projects kind of come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So, this prioritization and, you know, this master plan, but just trying to understand really, like, who, how does the city decide what is prioritized first? Like, how much input is from the citizens in that priority? I feel like a lot of times since I started, it's just like, this is what we're doing, but yeah. how did we get to that point? And I'm sure there's a lot of backstory and it takes a long time to get to that point, but just high level, like overview of the, yeah. the three or four steps of obviously planning to final and how does that decision right. process get made? Obviously funding is a big part of it, but just yeah. high level, how does it really? Yeah, who wants, so, you know, I'm just going to say that planning never, it's always overlaying, yeah. right? It's always yeah. coming in at different, but who from the city wants to tackle that? And I guess in, in short, <laughs> yeah, I'll take I'll take a stab <laughs> at it. Um, so it comes from multiple directions, as you can imagine. Yeah. Sometimes it is citizen-led, especially if it's like a localized project. Like uh, from the engineering side, I have the most experience with, so... Uh, improving an unimproved road a lot of times is driven by the people who live on the one or two block section that's getting improved. That's the main way we get those uh, through the door is, you know, citizens all say, we want this to happen. They have their buy-in and it gets brought to, they bring it to the staff and the staff proceeds through the required steps to get it through the door to commission to become a real project and actually get built. Uh, similarly, in different every different department where they're bringing things in, a lot of stuff does start with the residents sure. because the idea is born, right? And we have the master plans guide us as to what are supposed to be priorities. So that's why there's these multiple rounds of feedback as they're coming through designing the master plan is it's basically we're presenting all these opportunities for the public to provide commentary towards the direction they want it to go as we're bringing it up. Uh, and then at the deep end of the day, and Nick or Melissa fill in if I'm missing something here, but the commission ultimately provides final direction to the staff as to what direction we're going. But it's it's a little bit of, it can come from the commission having an idea because the public's talked to them. It can come from people reaching out to the staff 
and we're seeing a, a common trend need because just because we have a master plan doesn't sure. mean that the residents can't say that something is really necessary sure. that isn't part of that plan. Uh, I would, and then if staff observes a major need, it's a little bit, I'm, I haven't done enough parks projects to be able to tell you where I would see the staff being able to say, this is a project that we need to do and the basis behind it. But like engineering, we see like a water main keeps breaking on a specific street. That street might not be part of our long range plan at all. And engineering will say, hey, we've had so many breaks here. We need to do a project here. And they'll force a project into the schedule because it just needs to happen. It's for the, you know, the yeah. good of everyone. Yeah. But this, so there's a lot of different buckets of where projects can come up mm -hmm. is what you're saying. But then ultimately, is it the commission that just dictates the priority? So there's eight projects of different departments, and then these three, who makes the decision of these three at the top forefront? And, you know, that's what I'm wondering. How, who prioritizes all these together? Who makes all the, what's, who views it as most important and least important? Because everyone's got their own agenda, right? It, so. it depends to an extent. It'll, it still depends. Yeah. Commission may straight have something that is a priority to them and say that has to be done. Different departments, because we can kind of control our own buckets of money. Yeah. We might say we see a need from our department's you know goals and aspirations for the city that this is a priority, and so it's like things kind of naturally work different directions. Yeah. And then obviously, if some things like health, safety, or welfare that's going yeah. to take precedence, sure. right. um, it'll move it to the front of the line. Yeah. Um, not to confuse things, but we actually just went through a strategic planning process um, since we have so many plans to describe this <laughs> evening. But with the strategic plan, that was really the commission looking at very high level things yeah. um, and like really identifying their top goals. And so one of them and why we have Leah here is um, sustainability. They wanted like a broad push toward more sustainable um, projects, more sustainable, um, more sustainability measures built into individual projects. So because the commission established that as a high level goal, we will, um, those projects will kind of move forward as well. There was um, resident feedback included in that process. Um, we had evening meetings that the re you know residents were invited to. We did engage Birmingham and if somebody had sent an email that would have, that feedback would have been included, but yeah. nobody did. Um, so as Scott was saying, like we have resident focused projects, we have our broad commission goals, and then there's things that just have to be done. Yeah. So. Yeah, we try to, I would say as a whole, the city does try to balance the priorities. Like there, we try to take them from each area because we recognize that if we're not taking on a project that is a you know citizen-led project they'll you know we we need our citizens to know we're thinking of them right yeah. and but then we also you know we're all experts in our different fields so we try to make sure we're taking care of the citizen for the things the citizen doesn't know about also in our priorities because that's why you have experts that you know you have working for your city is they're looking out for you so it, you know it's a little give and take but you know. i think a relevant example too to kind of take it back within the context of this board yeah. is the opportunity that we were presented with from the woman regarding the fire station um you know i don't think the city had on their radar that they were going to plan it wasn't in any master plan or big you know to do anything with that property but um a resident took a petition got a petition for, brought it to the commission. That was her first stop, was the commission. The commission thought, well, you know, they're not gonna get in the weeds on that, right? The plan, that's yeah. not where they should be. Yeah. They punted it back to us, and we developed, or we had a, a, a proposal or a plan put together. I'm forgetting where that is right now, but I'm, I'm guessing yeah. that should, that's going to be part of what we're gonna be looking at, yep. okay. potentially, as we look at capital projects and any other plans is where does something like that fit into the priorities? Sure. It may rank really low 
for various reasons, but it also may rank high because you say, well, boy, that you know, there were 80 residents that were very involved in that for the cost, of, you, you know, so it's yeah. all those different variables. But I think that's example. an example of yeah. things that we can it, hopefully look forward to more of, too. It's an example of good, how citizen, like, yeah. ideas can bubble up. It can also kind of show you how it can get a little bit derailed, and if right. it's not really on a plan, you know, yeah. there's not only their limited budget, but there's limited city staff to chase everyone's right. dreams and right. write up proposals and get ar yeah, architects absolutely. to donate their time and mm -hmm. whatever and say, here's something. And then you're like, well, here's a plan, except for actually that's not designated as parkland, <laughs> and actually we don't know how to pay for right. it. So why did we spend four meetings talking about it and, and a lot of city resources? Yeah. But, but we, you know, it doesn't mean that the citizens didn't have a good idea. It's just somehow we need to figure out how to catch up and and spend the money that we have and be good stewards of it, but and keep all the ideas and I don't know, keep rolling them, yeah. rolling along. I think it's a great process discussion, you yeah. know. And I know Connie too. You've shared uh, not to get off, but you've shared some um, webinars regarding mm -hmm. meetings and you know what it means to serve on a board and all that. I think those are good refreshers for us all to participate in, so that we can be you know prepared and kind of understand what these processes look like because it's. It's complicated at times, so. Um, yeah. Can I make Thanks, a yeah. comment? Um, so from my experience on this board, I think we're often just, you know, we only meet once a month and we're not experts and we're, we're try to be stewards and citizen advisors and, and things like that. But much of what comes before our board and even asks us for action, like yes, we, we affirm and go, when you go to city commission, you can say that we back that idea. It's not like it's necessary, you can, go to city commission without our blessing. It's always about capital projects and bond projects. And I think that sometimes um, uh, maintenance projects or, or sustainability projects, or there are like other kinds of things that we could have some, some input on. I think when we're approving or or recommending capital projects, it's really useful to understand what kind of impact those projects will have on operating budgets. And in my kind of, you know, couple of year history here, we haven't had that before. And so I just kind of put it out there as maybe now if we're more integrative and bringing in other departments and with your experience as engineering, if we can understand when we're making a recommendation, what the impact that will have on the rest of the budget, not just to be stewards of capital expenses, but also, you know, the operations of the park. That would be something I would strive for in the future. Yeah, so one Great. final thing in closing I'll say to you is the staff is available to discuss any ideas that you have. You feel free. Email's always the easiest because we can, we'll have record of exactly what you're thinking and we can come back on it. But if you want to have conversations, I know Carrie and I are both more than willing to talk to people on the phone, uh, but email's always great because then we can reference that email at any time sure. moving it forward, but we're always happy. Staff's always happy to talk to residents about ideas that they have that they want to pursue. Great. Leah, you had a comment? But also mm -hmm. engage with the master planning process, yeah. right? So everyone here gave really, really good answers, but also it's a super prime time mm -hmm. since, um, you know, it seems very cyclical, like the train is always moving down the track, but these plans, a lot of it, a lot of things uh, are rooted in the plan, and like, it comes from all these different places, the strategic plan, the long range planning, capital planning, but when you embark on your master planning process, you're going to be looking at all those things and you're going to be bringing it all into one document and you're going to be prioritizing. And, you know, I got here at the end of the 2040 master planning process, so I haven't been involved as much, but I understand that there was robust, you know, civic engagement in that process and it really has shaped the final product. And so if I could just plug one starting point, it would be that um, it's a really prime time since you guys will be starting your master plan process. Um, and there will be, I assume, I would expect all along the way is opportunities for public engagement. So sometimes getting your ideas in the plan early in the public engagement can, can, um, can get it to the forefront of everybody's minds if it gets in 
integrated in the plan. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Um, I think we're on unfinished business, I think. Check me. <laughs> okay. Um, any uh, new business for members of the board to, or members of the public that are here with us in the room? No? Okay. Heather? Yes. I think I'm back to unfinished business. Oh, no. Who's diverted? <laughs> um, continuing to think about Crestview Pickleball. The one point that I think we discussed and, and could help them, the residents, get past some, their main issue, as near as I could tell, was parking. Parking on both sides of the street. And I, you know, I, I realize we don't control the street signage and stuff, but maybe we should in this instance of making it so that the cars park on the park side of the street and leave the resident side of the street so they don't get blocked in by cars on both sides of the street. You follow me? And I definitely and we can And if that's something that would take a long time to go through the different departments and get sign off on that concept, I guess I'd like to suggest that we start now thinking about that. Because it seems to make total sense to me. I, I live near Poppleton Park mm -hmm. and on Oxford Road it doesn't happen all the time, but there are times when people park on both sides of Oxford and you can barely, you, you really have to look a block ahead and hope that the car's not coming the other direction. If and it's it, a public safety issue and parks can't be, and vehicles can't be parked on both sides of the road, that's like a public safety thing to say, hey, I can get a fire truck down there. Mm -hmm. I don't really think no. it's that way, and I think that people get really used to parking in the street, mm -hmm. that's right in front of their house and you know what it's a public street and you're not you're not guaranteed a parking spot in front of your house right and I was reading even in the the consultants like 2040 master plan kind of how there's a ridiculous proliferation of little fancy little rules about who can park on what street what time so see home students don't park here so so Roper students don't park whatever and and it's it does make things kind of confusing so I'm not but certainly the idea of the citizens around Crestview Park, if they would like to talk to public safety and say, we want to request residents only parking, yeah. that still exists. Maybe it won't exist if parts of the 2040 plan or mm -hmm. it will be less likely to be adopted. But for now, yeah. it's an outlet, but I don't really think it's like That, that wasn't my point. Parks resident problem. only parking wasn't my point. My point is cars have to park on the park side of the street mm -hmm. and cannot park on the resident side of the street. Now, I know, granted, but if you, they people, weren't in here saying that. They weren't in here saying, we want you to get parking off half of the street. They, if you said that they couldn't park in front of their house, they, there'd be a whole nother group of people here. There we're would. They're not actually thinking about everyone's safety. Scott, go ahead. So I'll clarify that what you're discussing is actually an item that the multimodal board would be addressing. Mm. Uh, you're absolutely right or with safety, it's public safety is who gets addressed with it. Um, most of our roads in town are large enough that if you are parking on the side of the road as intended, uh, legally speaking, as you described, that you can still get a fire truck down the center of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the process for this would be that, you know, pickleball courts are, you know, built. We have people who are parking, et cetera. The neighborhood, as she described, would bring the issue typically to commission and the multimodal board, kind of like at the same time. Mm -hmm. Typically, commission will direct the multimodal board to provide a recommendation towards what should be done. But uh, again, with that, it's usually the police department that gets involved mm -hmm. for whether or not things get approved, how enforcement goes, all those items. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's more of a multimodal item. It's not a parks item. And, mm -hmm. and remember, our, our recommendation that the city commission approve pickleball in Crestview Park was circulated through all city departments and if there was an overwhelming public safety or multimodal issue with that recommendation it would be there though that staff and those boards you know uh, responsibility to to protect that interest and it was our responsibility to protect the interest of of parks and providing recreation yeah. 
opportunities to the to the right. to the public. Well, that issue is not unique to just that park. I mean, there are many right. roads that have the same issue. Mm -hmm. Park on both sides, and it's mm -hmm. challenging yeah. to get through. Right. I think we yeah. have to look. You know, we're we're kind of talking the, the the context of it related to pickleball. It just happened to be attached to pickleball, right. but it's yeah. really not the nuances of that. Is not something that really our board should be addressing on an individual right. basis. Right. It's just it's like mm -hmm. an yeah. yeah. But yeah. I think what you know, this is a good example again, a kind of case in point of these departments. To your point, when we're looking at the criteria, looking at all these different issues for selection or prioritization, we have an understanding of what other factors could play in that could impact that, and maybe maybe that would weigh sure. our decision in one way or the other, yeah. or maybe not. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, do you have something, Ross? Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> new business. <laughs> no, I keep feeling like we're coming back. All right, new business. No new business. We've decided none. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any items uh, open to the public for items not on the agenda? That's already back. Yeah. Oh, we've, 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 already we've, we've got a duplicate on the agenda. It's already finished. Yeah. Oh, that's. We're I just I'll think it, it wasn't. Um, no, it wasn't taken off the agenda. Yeah. yeah. All right. We've done that. All right, great. Do you have anyone joining us? For All right, with that said, then I think we can um, adjourn. Our next regular meeting is Tuesday, February 7th. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you.